thing that Nintendo has increasingly done over the past several years is port and remaster old games for modern consoles. There are many examples of this, pretty much all the 3D Zelda games have experienced anything from a drastic makeover to a slight upgrade of resolution and textures. This is to bring titles from older consoles to the current generation, so players who might not have had the chance to experience it beforehand can now. There are a few questionable aspects to this though, namely the fact of charging a full price for a game that can be sometimes over 10 years old, which at the end of the day is the exact same experience. And for some fans who have already bought these games on earlier consoles, there's no ability to bridge the gap between earlier purchases, and they often have to buy the game again if they want to play it on modern hardware. There's plenty to criticise here from the perspective of consumers, but there is one approach to this porting process that Nintendo have actually done a great job with. When it comes to remasters and ports, there are generally three common approaches Nintendo has. The first is the bundled package, putting a few similar titles together for one price. For example, the 3D All-Stars collection. This is a great and a pretty common approach by many companies in the industry and provides a lot of value for money. The second option is to simply port or remaster the game as is, with only minor tweaks and adjustments to the resolution and textures. This is okay, but isn't usually ideal with Nintendo as they have the tendency to charge full price for games that released sometimes well over a decade ago, with extremely minor tweaks packaged as a new experience. And the third is a port with new tweaks, improvements or content that elevates the title to a new experience altogether. This is the ideal option that I mentioned earlier, and is what we've seen with some cases, but not all of them. With this approach, Nintendo elevates a game from just being a port to a whole new experience, which may justify the repurchase for some fans, and the high price point. There are a few examples of this, but a recent one is Bowser's Fury within the port of Mario 3D World. This is great additional value, and the ideal way for Nintendo to approach remakes and ports. This line between new experience and a simple port is a bit blurry though, as some tweaks and changes that are often made might not justify a full price tag that these games are often sold at. While porting a game from an older console which is no longer in production makes the game more accessible, a lot of the time these games are many years old and are sold at full price with minor tweaks to present them as a brand new experience. While Twilight Princess HD looks distinctly better than the original, the changes were pretty incremental, and the additional content was locked behind various amiibos. Even if it's now accessible to new players, it's still asking quite a bit to charge the same rate as new other AAA experiences, with only a small amount of additional content. Though this is my opinion, and other creators on this channel may disagree with that. But regardless, what I do believe is that the approach Nintendo is taking with these new experiences is the way to go, as it adds great value to a game, which at the end of the day is a port from an older console, but also because it entices fans who may have already experienced the game to give it another go, even if they wouldn't be particularly interested in doing so if the game was mostly the same. At the very least, it's much better at justifying the full price tag. Another great example is the definitive edition of Xenoblade Chronicles. Not only did the game completely remaster the entire soundtrack and revamp all the textures, shaders and 3D models of the whole world, but also added a great deal of value in a new experience, with the Bionis' shoulder. This was an unfinished area of the original game back in 2012 that fans were extremely curious about, so to see an additional epilogue story segment that takes place in this newly finished area is something no fan of the original game could turn down. This approach of adding a new experience works wonders at attracting those who may not have picked up the title initially and drawing back in those players who played the original title but also want a new experience. There's also the case of Link's Awakening, which overhauled the visual art style with the adorable toy-like aesthetic while holding true to the original gameplay. While the core elements of the gameplay and the title's theme remain mostly unchanged, there's also the additional Dungeon Maker, which again adds that additional content. While the game on its own could have been justified as a brand new experience with the new graphics, this additional feature is a great touch, as it provides additional value. I think there's plenty of right and wrong ways to handle remakes, and we've seen plenty of both within the gaming industry. Many of Nintendo's IPs are of such high quality that porting them to a newer console for new people to experience them is a no-brainer, but there is a right way and a wrong way to do it. That's why I believe, if they're going to do a port, they should really consider the value and if it's actually worth the full price tag, and what additional value they could add. Speaking of value, that's something we really try to provide with our videos, making sure they're heavily brainstormed and researched before they're actually released. So if you did enjoy the video, 
we really hope you subscribe because it does mean a lot. That's all for me today. On my own channel, I do game analysis on games like Metroid and Xenoblade and much, much more. So if you could check that out, that'd also be a huge help. Thanks for watching.